So good afternoon, everyone. Sorry to be a few minutes uh, late. I just have one thing to mention uh, at, at the top. Um, we are alarmed by the government of Azerbaijan's crackdown on civil society. The secretary raised our concerns in his December 21st phone call with President Aliyev. Since then, we have seen the closure of RFERL's offices, the seizure of its property, and RFERL employees forcibly taken from their homes for questioning by local law enforcement on unspecified charges. Contractors and others tangentially connected to RFERL are also being interrogated by authorities. These actions, along with the denial of access to legal counsel during these interrogations, is further cause for concern. We call again on Azerbaijani authorities to adhere to their OSCE and other international commitments to uphold human rights and basic freedoms, including freedom of the press. In this regard, President Aliyev's decision today to pardon 87 individuals, including 10 considered to have been imprisoned for civic activism, is a step in the right direction. We urge Azerbaijan's authorities to build on these pardons by releasing others incarcerated in connection with exercising their fundamental freedoms. Um, that's all I have for you at the top. Uh, for those of you who, have, uh, who were here last week, you know the drill, but please remember to push the button uh, on your microphone in order to ask a question so we can accurately reflect it in the transcript. Matt, please. Right. Um, we may, may get back to Azerbaijan in a minute, but let, let's start with um, the plane, uh, the missing plane, and what the U.S. role is, if any, in assisting either the governments of Indonesia or Malaysia with the investigation. Right. So, um, well, uh, as, uh, as, we've, uh, as you all are aware, uh, there is an operation underway to locate uh, Air Asia Flight 8501. Uh, we can confirm that there were no American citizens traveling on the flight. Uh, our embassy in Jakarta is in close contact with Indonesian officials. And uh, today we received a request for assistance locating the airplane. Um, and uh, we are reviewing that request to find out uh, how, how best uh, we, can, uh, we can meet Indonesia's request for assistance. We've just received the request today, uh, so it will take us uh, a little bit of time. What, to, was, uh, it any, to was, there, was the request any more specific than just a general request to help with locating the, the plane? Uh, well, I, I don't want to go into de too many details of, uh, of the Indonesian request, but it was a request for assistance uh, associated with locating uh, the aircraft. I, I we don't have technical... Um, Which would be normally handled by who in this government? Uh, well, that's, that's one of the things we are, we are assessing, uh, of course. Uh, is which but you don't know if they specifically be. asked for kind of military assets or anything like that that might be used in a search. Well, the Indonesians got into some details, but again, we're, we're reviewing their request to see uh, how best we can meet it, so I don't want to, uh, to get ahead of, uh, of our review uh, of their request. Okay. Uh, anything else on this topic? <coughs> Ali, go ahead. Uh, to whom was this uh, request made and, and from whom was it delivered? Uh, well, we received a diplomatic note uh, at our embassy in Jakarta from, uh, from Indonesian uh, authorities. Uh, so our embassy, of course, uh, is focused on uh, finding, uh, finding ways to, uh, to be responsive. Of course, we, uh, we've been in close contact uh, with Indonesian officials since the disappearance uh, of the plane. Anything else on this topic? Um, all right, uh, Saeed. Change topic. Go ahead. Talk about the Palestinians' effort at the United Nations. Today, they are submitting an amended uh, version of their draft proposal. First of all, have you seen the amended uh, version? And second, what will your reaction be? Well, we've seen reports regarding uh, Palestinian and Jordanian plans to bring their text to a vote uh, at the Security Council. There are discussions still taking place um, uh, in New York and, we are in g and, and with the Secretary, who has, uh, uh, who has spoken with uh, some of his counterparts. Um, and we are uh, therefore uh, engaging with, with all the relevant stakeholders. As we've said before, this draft resolution is not something that we would support, and uh, other countries share uh, the same, same concerns uh, that, that we have. 
uh, other country that, that that includes, let's say, the Permanent Five of the U. Uh, the well, I don't want to. Uh, I'll, I'll let the other Permanent countries five. speak for themselves, but I simply want to make the make the point that uh, that other countries see uh, similar problems uh, to those that we see. Uh, members of the Israeli cabinet yesterday said that if the goes is the vote goes through or brought to a vote, then uh, they are going to collapse the Palestinian Authority. Have they discussed anything like this with you? I don't have any conversations uh, to read out uh, about uh, on that score. Um, I would say that, uh, again, we don't think this resolution is constructive. Uh, we, we think it sets arbitrary deadlines for reaching a peace agreement and for Israel's withdrawal from the West Bank. Um, and those are more likely to curtail useful negotiations uh, than to bring them to a successful conclusion. Um, further, we think that the resolution fails to account for Israel's legitimate security needs. And uh, the satisfaction of those needs, of course, is integral to a sustainable um, settlement. And, and finally, on, the, on this issue, uh, it seems that the Palestinians did not get the nine votes needed. Uh, now, if, if this is the case, would, would it be prudent for the United States to sort of abstain if uh, any well, I'm, I'm, not going to to, I'm not going to preview uh, anything before a vote has been scheduled, um, but uh, I would go back to my, the point I made at the start, which is that we don't believe this resolution advances the goal of, of a two-state solution. Um, other com on this topic? Go ahead, Pam, please. Yes. Jeff, there are oh. news reports that say... No, sorry, uh, is it on this? Yes. There are news reports that say that the Secretary had a conversation with Mahmoud Abbas yesterday, and during that conversation it was, um, in addition to the Secretary saying that the U.S. would possibly veto such a measure, um, also he hinted at economic sanctions. Can you confirm that? Well, Secretary Kerry has been in touch uh, both with President Abbas and with Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, as well as with many other world leaders in the past few days, but I'm not going to comment on the content of his, uh, of these private conversations. Matt, did you have a follow-up yeah, on, on this who, topic? Yeah, I just want to, you said the Secretary had been speaking with his colleagues, who other than, <coughs> since Abbas and Netanyahu are not act his actual counterparts, who among his counterparts has he spoken to? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the, uh, perhaps I was imprecise in my use of the word counterparts. Uh, he's, yeah. uh, you didn't say counterparts, you said colleagues, but I'm just wondering, okay. has he spoken with any foreign minister? Uh, the, uh, the, the calls uh, that, uh, that are relevant to this topic that I have to read out are with, uh, uh, with those two guests. <coughs> any uh, further questions on this topic? Um, no, please go ahead. On North Korea, uh, North Korea's internet outage. As you know, you know uh, North Korea blamed the United States cyber attack against North Korea last weekend and humiliated the President Obama. First of all, uh, you have some comment on this. Uh, well, this came up I in the briefing <coughs> last week uh, as well. Uh, we have no new information to share uh, regarding, uh, regarding North Korea. Uh, and if there are questions related to the uh, internet uh, possibly being down in North Korea, I would refer you to, to them uh, for details. Uh, so North Korea blamed you know, the uh, internet outage. It's because of some US action. You have some comment. Uh, no, as I say, I have nothing, uh, nothing new to, uh, to share uh, on that. Uh, and on that President, uh, as President Obama mentioned, the US, United States will respond. Uh, and so uh, have, uh, has the United States already take any action against North Korea for now? Uh, well, uh, I think, uh, as, uh, as the President uh, has said, you know, we are evaluating um, our potential response and uh, we're not going to go into operational details uh, of, of what the various options uh, are. Um, and uh, the President also, I think, was pretty clear in saying that uh, any response by the United States will be proportional um, and we'll uh, do so at a time we choose. But I don't have anything further uh, to add uh, about that. Uh, let me just confirm, did you take some action? I have, I have nothing uh, additional to, to say uh, uh, about that. Um, anything further on, uh, on DPRK? Yeah, I'm wondering if, there were if you guys ever got answers to the questions that were left unanswered last week about <coughs> the legality of accepting compensation to be paid that you suggest should be paid to Sony by 
by the North well, Korean government? Well, I think government? Uh, the, the DPRK hasn't yet shown any, uh, uh, any readiness to, uh, to admit uh, culpability and uh, to embark upon compensation. If, if we get to that stage, I'm sure we'll be able to find okay. a, You're aware uh, of reports that have surfaced that. over the last couple of days that suggest that North Korea might have actually had absolutely nothing to do with this and that, in fact, it was, is more likely that it, w that it involved that the hack involved disgruntled former Sony employees. Have you seen those reports? Uh, well, uh, we are uh, we are aware that uh, that there have been uh, some some reports uh, of that uh, kind. However, uh, as the FBI has made clear, and the United States government uh, stands behind the FBI analysis, we are confident that that North Korea is responsible for this destructive attack, um, and we stand by that conclusion. Are you aware <coughs> of any time the U.S. government has been made such an allegation, an accusation, and has been wrong? I don't have uh, any specific examples uh, to mind. Um, is there something you have in mind? Uh, n no, I'm just wondering how it is that you're so sure of what they have come up with, uh, what the FBI and the other investigators have come up with when it, um, when it, when it seems that they're there are these reports suggesting a highly plausible alternate mm -hmm. scenario that doesn't involve a unpredictable and nuclear armed country. Oh, well, again, I'd refer you to the FBI for questions about okay. the, the details of their uh, their analysis. They've they've released you're, some you're of the some of their conclusions mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, on which they based uh, their analysis. And I would also remind that the government of North Korea has a long history <coughs> of denying responsibility for destructive and provocative actions. Right. But this building is comfortable with the it, – this building being the, the, the main building in Washington that deals with foreign governments sure. uh, is still – remains comfortable with the FBI's accusation that the North Koreans were – the North Korean government was yes. behind us. Um, further on, on North Korea, uh, it just I, – I think the gentleman here had, uh, had, uh, had a question before. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, uh, Google's Gmail is, is down, as you know, uh, and I was wondering if uh, the State Department could confirm that the Chinese government is responsible for the blockage. You're, you're referring to in China? In China, yes. yes. So we are certainly aware of reports that, uh, that Google's uh, Gmail has been blocked in China uh, since uh, December 26th. Uh, we continue to be concerned uh, by efforts in China to undermine freedom of expression, <coughs> including on the internet. And we believe Chinese authorities' uh, censorship of the media and of certain websites is, is incompatible with China's aspirations to build a modern um, information-based economy and society. So we encourage China to be transparent in its dealings with international companies um, and to consider the market signal it sends uh, with, uh, with such acts. And uh, Google says that uh, the blockage is not due to any malfunction on its part. Uh, has the State Department been in touch with Google on this issue? Uh, I'm happy to check and see if we have been. I, I don't, I'm not uh, directly aware, um, but uh, uh, certainly uh, this is uh, an issue of concern uh, for us. Um, further on this topic, yes? Just a quick follow-up on the Gmail. The Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson actually <coughs> said she didn't know anything about Google's being blocked. What is your response to the Chinese government's reaction? Uh, well, I, I would let them speak uh, for themselves. Uh, again, I think we've uh, we've heard reference to uh, to Google's own uh, statements, uh, and we've certainly seen reports about uh, Gmail being blocked. Uh, I, I I can't speak on behalf of the Chinese government, though. Do you see this as the Chinese government's action to block Gmail? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't have. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not uh, issuing a judgment about attribution. I, I'm simply uh, you know, stating that we're uh, aware of these reports. Uh, it's been going on for several days, um, and uh, as as uh, your colleague mentioned, uh, Google has also um, spoken out uh, about it. Uh, Ali, did you have a question on the same topic? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, switch topics. Oh, on China? Okay, yeah, go ahead, Leslie. Well, it's not specifically that one, but um, uh, have you seen the reports about China's looking at signing an agreement with the U.S. Um, to target ac um, assets illegally taken out by Chinese corrupt officials? 
Mm -hmm. um, these were reports wondering um, whether that, whether the US intends to sign that, whether that discussion has happened already or you expect it to. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there's a, let me just clarify at the start, there's no additional agreement, agreement currently being considered. Um, but the United States and China are parties to a number of existing multilateral and bilateral agreements that uh, touch upon mutual legal assistance and the recovery of criminal assets. Um, so the United States is committed to fighting uh, corruption and denying safe haven to corrupt officials or illegally acquired assets. Um, uh, and the, as far as the mechanisms, um, the United States has authority to recover proceeds of crimes, including proceeds linked to foreign corruption. Um, but uh, those would vary based on the details of each particular case and on U.S. law. So I don't have a, a, any uh, specific um, you know, details to, to share in response <coughs> to that, uh, that particular um, story. Okay. Um, change topics? Go ahead. Yes, please. Azer back to Azerbaijan. Uh, I think in 2009, uh, Azerbaijani government first time shut down uh, VOA, RFERL, and BBC on public frequencies. So ever since then, they, uh, these media outlets uh, have to function only in internet in Azerbaijan. Um, and from that day, we see uh, Azerbaijani human rights activists and journalists and bloggers being chased and imprisoned. Uh, IREX came under pressure uh, recently, and now we have the situation with RFERL. So throughout the course of this time, we see the Department of State expressing its concern, deep concern sometimes, but there was no further action. There was no real impact on us azerbaijan relations. That's what the observers uh, notice. Um, my question is, if the Azerbaijani government does not allow RFRL to function freely and properly in Azerbaijan, and why not does not allow to return these channels, BBC, VOA, to public frequencies, do you think this may eventually have a Im real impact on U.S.-Azerbaijan relations, and this building, the government of the United States may take certain actions uh, to, to express uh, its concern rather than just making uh, the statement? Thank you. Well, I, I'm not going to prejudge uh, any, any actions by the United States. Uh, I would simply reiterate that uh, we are uh, deeply concerned uh, by, uh, by these steps, and we've raised these activities, uh, we've raised our concern about these activities with senior officials uh, in the <coughs> Azerbaijani government, uh, and indeed the secretary himself raised these concerns uh, just a few days ago with President Aliyev. So, Clearly, this is a topic that uh, we take quite seriously. Uh, it remains uh, on our agenda, and we will continue to raise it, but I'm not going to uh, prejudge uh, anything, anything further. Yes, Pam, on the same topic? Yes. A couple of additional questions. First of all, the journalists who were detained <coughs> on Friday and um, in the, over the weekend when their homes were raided, did um, the State Department have any contact with them, and if so, did that contact um, help secure their release? Uh, I don't have any, uh, any conversations or contacts of that kind uh, to read out. I simply, I simply don't, uh, uh, don't have that information. And also, has there been any new U.S. effort to press for the release of um, the journalists, the RFE journalists who's been detained since December, um, Khadija Ismailova? Well, I don't have new information to, to share about that, uh, about that case, um, but I think uh, from, uh, from what we've said already on the RFERL case, the United States takes freedom of expression and uh, freedom of the press uh, very seriously, and so, of course, uh, we, raise, uh, we raise our concerns uh, when, uh, when we have them. Um, same topic? Uh, we'll start here and then we'll come over to you. Go ahead. I just, I just wanted to follow up uh, with the reporter's question. Is, are the calls you're having with Azerbaijani officials, are they of concern or are you actually making efforts to tell them to, you know, stop doing this and coercing Well, I people? think you can be assured that when the Secretary of State uh, takes, uh, takes this under consideration and uh, raises it with, uh, with one of his uh, foreign, uh, foreign colleagues, uh, including president, president of a country, that uh, you know he uh, he makes his uh, his view known. Uh, I'm not going to uh, get into more details about the content of the conversation, but mm -hmm. clearly it's it's important to uh, to the United States government, to the State Department, and to the Secretary uh, as well. 
Will you have a readout of the conversation at some point? I'm not going to get into more detail uh, of the conversation than that, uh, but I, I want to highlight that this is something that we're addressing at the highest levels. Yes, go ahead. And Tariq, what about uh, Azerbaijan? I would like to ask a question you. Uh, you know, Azerbaijan have to stage in Armenia from July, Dilgam Askarov and Shafaz Guriev. Today was illegal trail in Armenia, um, and Dilgam Askarov was sentenced to life, and Shafaz Guriev to 22 years in uh, prison. I would like to know to your opinion about this. Uh, uh, I, I don't have any uh, any information uh, about the about the case uh, here. I'm happy to look into that and see if we can get you something uh, after after the briefing. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, change topic. Okay. Iraq. Uh, a couple of days ago, uh, uh, an Iranian general and the Revolutionary Guard, Hamid Takawi, was killed in a battle near Samara. First of all, uh, do you have any comments on the participation of the Iranians apparently in the fight against ISIS? Or is that something that you welcome or that you, you know, you don't encourage? Well, I don't have anything to confirm. Uh, of course, we've seen the reports that there was a funeral for uh, an IRGC, uh, uh, the IRGC commander. Um, we have expressed our concerns about Iranian activity uh, in Iraq uh, for, uh, for some time, um, and also our concerns about the flow of Iranian arms um, uh, into Iraq. And of course, that uh, applies here um, as well. But the Iranian acknowledged, basically. I mean, you know, they have, they have like a state funeral for him. Well, I, I don't have any, uh, okay. I think right. clearly also, we've been concerned about, uh, uh, about that, and uh, uh, I, I don't have uh, additional um, also, statements to add uh, to it, though. Uh, news from Turkey says that Turkey is going to send in advisors and so on. Is that something that is being coordinated with you <coughs> as perhaps, you know, Turkey becoming a more active member of the coalition in this case to send in advisors into Iraq to aid the Iraqis in the fight against ISIS? Well, clearly the, the United States uh, and Turkey and many other countries in the region uh, share the, the goal of, of strengthening uh, the Iraqi government in its fight <coughs> against ISIS. Um, so that is something that we continue to talk uh, to, to our Turkish partners uh, about. I'd refer you to the Turkish government for more details on the precise nature uh, and location of the assistance that they're going to provide. But it's certainly consistent with the five uh, lines of effort in the fight against ISIL, uh, and Turkish support to the Iraqi uh, authorities is uh, something that uh, is, is a positive thing. And finally, uh, on the downing of the Jordanian pilot, uh, yeah. has there been any kind of uh, sort of change in, in the bombing strategy or anything for that the coalition is conducting uh, against ISIS as a result of that? fearing that perhaps they could bring down an American airplane and capture an American pilot? Well, we continue to work closely with the government of Jordan uh, concerning the captured uh, Jordanian pilot, and our, our thoughts and prayers, of course, are uh, with the pilot and his family and the Jordanian armed forces as we work for his safe return. And, uh, but beyond uh, the fact that we are working closely with the government of Jordan, I, I don't uh, have uh, further details that uh, I'm going to uh, <coughs> offer uh, on, on that matter. Okay. Um, yes, Matt. Yeah, on, on, on Iran, but also then on Turkey. Sure. Um, the president gave an interview uh, a while ago, but it just aired this morning, I guess, on, on NPR, in which he talked uh, a little bit about Iran and a little bit about a lot of other stuff. But on Iran, there were a couple things he said. Um, uh, one is that <clears throat> he would not, you know, he, he said that it, it was a possibility or he's open to the idea of reopening the embassy in, in Tehran during the next course, over the course of the next two years, um, of his two years in office. And since there is no White House press briefing that I'm aware of today, mm -hmm. and you're the foreign policy guy that <clears throat> this week. That's a um, ringing endorsement. Is, uh, the, uh, well, no, I mean, normally I would ask how the people of the White House ask, sure. as it was the President's words. But I, is that the, this building's understanding of the way the negotiation, the nuclear talks with Iran are going on, is they're not an end to themselves, i.e. to get rid of uh, any uh, ability Iran might have to, to, um, to, um, to build a, a nuclear weapon, but they are actually aiming towards normalization of the sort that you are looking for with, that the President is mm -hmm. looking for with Cuba? Well, I, I think, uh, I, think <coughs> I would encourage uh, folks to read the entire text of the President's uh, interview in particular with, with respect uh, to Iran. Uh, you know, he was, in response to a question, um, he 
about the possible opening of U.S. Embassy, he said, um, I never say never. Um, and then he proceeded to lay out um, the, the fact that you know, right now the focus is on the nu getting the nuclear issue uh, resolved. Um, and that's a question of whether Iran is willing to seize the opportunity that the nuclear talks represent. So uh, it, the, if, it, and then he describes that as the first big step. Um, and then there would then perhaps be a basis over time to improve relations. But I think it, reading the, the <coughs> president's answer to that question, it's quite clear that the focus is on nuclear uh, negotiations. Right. And that is. Uh, but my question is, is that given his comments, is the, <coughs> the specific, the nuclear negotiation, I is that just a part of what the administration hopes will be a broader uh, reconciliation or rapprochement with Iran that ends up with normalization of relations by 2016 when the president leaves office? Well, as the administration has said, we are not closing any doors, but our concerns on Iran are well known, and our focus now is on resolving the nuclear issue. Um, there's a chance to do that, but that's a question of Iran uh, taking, okay. that, uh, taking that opportunity. Another thing he said in the interview about Iran is that if they go, went ahead and reached an agreement, if they got a deal, a nuclear deal, and if the Iranians actually complied, that Iran would be uh, in a position to become a successful regional power and suggested that, that was some, that's something that the United States would like to see. And, uh, you guys have made no secret of the fact that it is not just the nuclear issue that is a problem for you with Iran, that there are numerous other things, including the fact that it is the leading state sponsor of terrorism in the world, as identified by you guys. Um, it, I, I'm just wondering, does the administration want to see Iran become a quote unquote successful regional power? given the fact that, that since 1979, American foreign policy with respect to Iran has been designed to keep it from becoming a successful regional uh, power, has been designed to keep it from exerting its uh, strength over your, or ex exerting uh, pressure on your allies in the region, both Israel and the, uh, and the Arab states? Well, Again, the, 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 the President's answer to the question and U.S. policy is focused on resolving uh, the nuclear issue. Um, that, is, uh, that is our focus, um, and that's why we have the P5 plus 1 talks uh, going on. Well, right, now, but why bring in all this other stuff then? If it's a focus is just on the nuclear issue, why even broach the idea that you want to see Iran become a success, successful regional power and leave the door open to you know normalization of relations to the point where you could open an embassy. Well, I think the, I think the point is that Iran's behavior um, is the factor that drives that, and it's uh, Iran's behavior uh, w needs to change not only on the nuclear issue, um, where we have been involved in right. the negotiation process, um, but in other uh, respects well, as I well. Understand. I I get all that, but I'm just wondering why. And I guess I'll have to you know I need. Someone needs to ask the president why he answered the questions the way he the way he did to leave this thing open because it sounds as though that it sounds as though the nuclear the administration sees or at least he sees the nuclear negotiations as a path to bring Iran back into the fold but uh, back into the fold and not just with the United States but that's not the way I interpret the, uh, the the transcript okay. uh, I, I think it's quite clear that the focus is on dealing with the nuclear issue. Um, Yes, go ahead. Okay, so uh, first on Iraq, um, yesterday General Allen told Der Spiegel uh, that an Iraqi ground offensive will occur when the time is right. Um, what is your current assessment of Iraqi forces, and do you have an updated timetable for any kind of ground offensive? Uh, and a separate one on uh, Russia, Syria. Well, of course, we are engaged with Iraqi forces to, uh, to help uh, improve their uh, capacity. We've already seen uh, Iraq uh, take the initiative uh, in in places like uh, Sinjar, where now a uh, the siege has been broken, um, uh, and in a variety of other places uh, where they have taken the fight uh, to ISIL. Um, I'm not going to get ahead of of their decisions about further uh, military activity. Of course, that's uh, that is something that one wouldn't want to telegraph, and it's also a uh, a, a question for the uh, Iraqis 
um, uh, to, to decide uh, first and foremost. Okay, and on Ar uh, Russia, Syria, sorry. Uh, do you have any comments on reports that Russia is planning to host a uh, Syria peace conference uh, possibly next month? Uh, over the weekend, Syria expressed a willingness to join those talks. We, uh, we are aware of, uh, of these uh, discussions, and we reiterate the need for a political solution um, to the conflict, which is compatible with the Geneva communique. Um, so uh, we certainly uh, call on the regime to cease atrocities against the Syrian people and uh, to enter into a peaceful political process. Um, as far as uh, Russia's initiative, uh, we're aware of it, but we're not involved uh, in the planning of it. Uh, so uh, we hope that uh, Russia's engagement uh, reflects a sincere intention to uh, seek a political solution that's compatible with the Geneva communique. Yes, yes see how uh, it's been a year since uh, Geneva too. Uh, <coughs> isn't perhaps time to sort of launch some sort of a negotiations that can lead to a peaceful settlement? Isn't that something that you are pushing for? Well, uh, we, we support a political solution w that is compatible with the Geneva communique. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's, uh, that's our, uh, that's our but, goal. But um, is the United States likely to sort of launch its own initiative to get the process going again, to bring some life into it? Uh, well, uh, I think we've, uh, we've certainly been uh, focused uh, on Syria over the last uh, many months, uh, including through our support to the uh, opposition and the training and equip program, which is uh, coming online uh, soon. And uh, so uh, our efforts have been uh, focused uh, there in addition to supporting the political process. But uh, I think the uh, Syrian regime has shown, uh, has shown no real indication uh, of, of willingness and desire to, uh, to participate. Um, Change topic. Turkey. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Brad. Do you have um, anything to say about the Prime Minister of Turkey uh, meeting and spending significant time with uh, senior leader of Hamas? I don't think I have any uh, any comment uh, uh, to offer uh, no uh, on that. Uh, I, I'm happy to see if we have uh, more of a readout, uh, but uh, um, uh, the uh, you know, nothing nothing to add right uh, right at this point. Okay. Uh, can, can you can you push really hard to get an answer on this because it seems sure. kind of unusual that the prime minister of a NATO ally of yours is meeting with the head or the political chief of a sure. an organization that you designate as a terrorist group, uh, and you guys don't have anything to say. Yeah, about no, we'll come back with, uh, yeah, with, with something this afternoon uh, for you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm sorry, I, I overlooked you there on the on the side. You're in the in the second row. Please Thank go you. ahead. Uh, from the cheap seats. Um, Today marks one year since uh, Egypt has held three Al Jazeera journalists in prison. I'm wondering if you have anything on that, and I have a follow-up. Thank you. Right. Um, so we continue to express our deep concerns directly to the government of Egypt about the detained uh, journalists. We are watching the trial uh, closely. Uh, there is an appeal hearing um, that is, uh, is scheduled uh, to happen uh, shortly. We believe that all journalists should be able to, uh, to do their jobs free from intimidation uh, or any fear of retribution. And we continue to urge uh, the Egyptian government to respect the freedom of the press, protect civil society, and uphold the rule of law, which is crucial to Egypt's long-term um, stability. Uh, further, we uh, call on the Egyptian government to consider all available measures for uh, redressing uh, these verdicts. Thank you very much for that. Do you, does this building see uh, anything positive in the what's been characterized as a thaw between Qatar and the Egyptian authorities? Is there anything to be made uh, out of recent moves to repair their relationship? Mm -hmm. Well, certainly we, we support improved uh, relations, uh, but would refer you to the governments uh, themselves uh, for, uh, for further uh, comment on that. Thank you. Yes, Can I stay on this just for a second? Sure. I, the, this consider all available measures to redress these verdicts. That's exactly the same language that Ambassador Power used a little bit earlier today. Um, or what? The, I don't understand what this administration is using as leverage if it really wants to see these people released, considering the fact that the president signed a law, the appropriations bill, which removes the human rights criteria from get, sending aid to Egypt. You went ahead and delivered those 10 Apaches back in November without seeing any demonstrable improvement in the human rights situation. 
why should anyone in Egypt or anywhere else, for that matter, take you take you seriously when you say that 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 you are concerned about the human rights situation and you want and, and you would like to see Egypt fix these things? Well, uh, we've raised uh, this case at the highest levels. Um, and yeah, and uh, then the other side, you give them millions of dollars and flood them with helicopters. They're getting, or if they don't take consider all available measures to redress these verdicts, what are you going to do? Send them 20 more Apaches? Well, I'm not going to uh, prejudge future actions, but we take uh, we take the human rights situation in Egypt seriously, as we also take I, I our, our, our alliance can, and partnership I, I in Egypt I seriously. I don't see how you can say that with a straight face when you've done everything. You've, you've gutted or you went along with language in a, in, in a bill on the Hill and the president signed mm -hmm. uh, that removes the requirement that you certify that Egypt is making progress on human rights and to, to, to give them assistance. Well, uh, how, do, the, how, do, how, do you, how can you possibly explain that? Or how can you square that with calling on them to improve their human rights situation when you're not prepared to do anything at all to put any pressure on them? Well, I dispute that we're not prepared to do anything at all. I wouldn't uh, accept that characterization. Well, okay, uh, the, you're the, prepared the bill, to give the them millions was, of dollars in aid and give them military equipment. Well, the bill that was, uh, that, that was approved by Congress uh, was a comprehensive bill. It was not the only aspect uh, of, well, the, I know, of the bill. So. Um, again, uh, to, to suggest that that was uh, the administration's goal and intent, uh, I think, uh, goes a bit uh, far. Uh, and we've continued to make, uh, make a point of, of stressing the importance of, of human rights uh, with Egyptian authorities. We do that publicly, we do that privately as well, and we'll continue to do so. Are you, suge are you suggesting that that Sorry, wasn't? A second, go ahead. Are you suggesting that wasn't the administration's intent? That the administration actively opposed? No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I said this was this was a, a bill with uh, with well, many components. I'm uh, asking uh, you, is it the mm -hmm. what what is the administration's position on human rights criteria as part of Egypt's aid? Do you support human rights criteria without waivers or are you against that? Well, I'd refer you to the White House for legislative uh, for details involving legislation and their interaction with well, you, uh, you with Congress. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Uh, on Egypt, would you say that U.S. Cons considerations, or, or the U.S. gives higher consideration to security arrangements with Egypt, let's say, over human rights. Would you say that? I'm not going to put prioritize one but, over the other. Let's say um, that you know you maintain the security uh, relationship and uh, the fight against terrorists in, in the Sinai and uh, perhaps the Israeli uh, Egyptian agreement. You give that as a top priority in new relations with Egypt. No, I, I, I'm rights. not. I'm not going to uh, to give uh, to assign uh, assign numerical uh, uh, rank orders. Yes, can, go ahead. Can we stay on human rights in uh, in, in, in the region, uh, Bahrain. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Do you have anything to say about the arrest in Bahrain of the Secretary General of Al Wafaq? Yes, we're concerned by the arrest of opposition leader Sheikh Ali Salman. And we're following this case clo closely and uh, working to gather more information. Uh, we're urging all parties to avoid taking any actions that escalate tensions. And we urge specifically the government of Bahrain to follow due process and to abide by its commitment to transparent judicial proceedings in full accordance with Bahraini law and with Bahrain's international legal uh, obligations. Okay. And if they don't? They can this expect is your favorite to get question, uh, ten uh, Apache uh, helicopters. Well, I'd say we're at, we're looking we're looking for more information on the charges uh, associated with the case. Uh, those are not clear at this point, um, so we're trying to gather uh, more information uh, about that. Again, we call on Bahrain to ensure equal treatment uh, under the law and to advance justice uh, in a in a transparent uh, and fair and predictable uh, way. You have been expressed you you not you personally, but the administration have been expressing expressing concerns about the human rights situation in Bahrain for some time now. Mm -hmm. Has it improved at all? Um, can you point to any, any sign that the situation is, uh, is improving or that your entreaties to the government of Bahrain have done, uh, done more? And when I say any sign, I mean more than allowing back in a senior U.S. diplomat who they deported earlier mm -hmm. in the year? Well, we have, as you allude to, we, we have an active dialogue with Bahrain. We, uh, we raise uh, these issues with them uh, regularly and at high levels. Uh, that's, that's part of our, of our bilateral relationship, uh, and it will remain so. So, no, you can't point to any 
any, any, any I'm happy to look through the history and we can come back with, uh, with, with some specifics if that's uh, what you're looking for. Um, yes, go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering if you had any re reactions to the news coming out of the Greek parliament today about the, um, their failure to elect the president and their, uh, hold the elections next month? Well, we understand that according to Greek law, the, they, they will hold a general election within the next 30 days. So we will continue to follow those, uh, those developments, uh, but I'm not going to speculate about, uh, about the outcome uh, of them. I have a yes. question about a completely different topic, but um, yeah, go ahead. Do you have anything to add to uh, President Obama's um, statement about the, the withdrawal of combat troops from Afghanistan? Uh, well, any question that starts off, do you have anything to add to the president's statement? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can you kind of telegraph what answer or, you would expect. Or anything you'd like to, to reemphasize, perhaps? Um, well, no. The president said yesterday uh, that uh, that this ceremony marks the end of the combat mission in Afghanistan, and it's a milestone for. Uh, bringing to a, to an end the longest war in American history, uh, and bringing it to a responsible conclusion. But the end of the combat mission uh, it, it me means also that we have a continuing um, support. We have continuing support to the government of Afghanistan, um, and that was reaffirmed most recently, uh, not only by the United States but by the international community in Brussels uh, and in London. Uh, NATO and the international community have renewed their commitment to a sovereign and stable uh, and unified uh, Afghanistan, a democratic Afghanistan. We're part of that commitment, uh, and uh, we, we look forward to, uh, to maintaining uh, both the, uh, the training uh, and, and assistance uh, component, but also the broader uh, engagement with Afghanistan that, uh, that is a key part of that. Ali? Uh, related to that, uh, the Taliban put a letter out sometime overnight saying that they would continue to wage jihad in the region and that the change of mission uh, and turnover to Afghan forces was uh, meaningless. I'm just wondering if the U.S. has any reaction to what the Taliban said. No, I, I think uh, our, we're focused on our partnership with the government of Afghanistan and the growing capability of Afghan security forces and their growing leadership uh, role. Yes, go ahead. Uh, on Ukraine and Russia. Yes. On Friday, Russian card extended uh, arrest of Ukrainian citizens who had been detained in Crimea in May this year. Today, uh, the Ukrainian government called the international community to condemn these actions. Do you have any uh, statement on this issue? Wait, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? I want to be sure I've got it. Yeah, right. on Friday, Russian card extended uh, arrest of Ukrainian citizens who had been detained, uh, detained in Crimea in May this year. Today, the government of Ukraine uh, called the international community to condemn this action. Uh, do you have any statement? So you're talking, though, about the, the Russian authorities extending the detention of Ukrainian citizens detained in Crimea. Yep. Uh, well, uh, you know, the United States does not recognize the attempted uh, annexation of Crimea by, uh, by Russia. And so naturally, uh, we, would, uh, we would oppose uh, any such steps uh, such as you've described. Now, I'm not familiar with the particular um, uh, details of that, uh, of that decision or that order, uh, but certainly we support the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine, and uh, we would call on any Ukrainian citizens who were detained uh, in, in Crimea during uh, Russia's invasion to, uh, to uh, be released. Um, so uh, that would be uh, our position uh, uh, on that. Do you have any other statements on the situation in Ukraine? Uh, well, you will have noticed uh, that uh, there was recently an exchange of detained persons between Ukrainian forces and the Russia-backed uh, separatists. Uh, we believe that these exchanges, uh, along with the decrease in violence, are positive steps, and they are also an opportunity to advance the prospects for a lasting political solution um, consistent with the Minsk uh, agreements. Um, we would also highlight that uh, as a signatory to the Minsk agreements, Russia is committed to release those hostages that it holds. And uh, so in that regard, we continue to call on uh, Russia to release Ukrainian member of parliament, Nadia uh, Savchenko, and film producer uh, Oleg Sentsov. Uh, we understand that Ms. Savchenko is uh, suffering health problems as a result of her detention. Uh, and more broadly, we call on Russia to, to use its, uh, its leverage and influence uh, with the separatists that it supports uh, to ex 
to implement the commitments of the Minsk agreements uh, immediately, uh, including returning control of the international border to Ukraine and working towards a peaceful resolution. So Leslie. I, oh, yes, ma'am. Well, I just, uh, did, did you, ref you, you consider these people to be host hostages? Nadia Savchenko and Oleg Sinsov? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, last week, the Ukrainian parliament voted um, on removing the non aligned status. Mm -hmm. um, you had, there was some brief comment at the time from here, but today President Poroshenko has signed that. He signed law. it, yes. Um, so now that it is official, um, he didn't veto it, in other words. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have anything more to say about this and what it might mean for tension between not just Russia and Ukraine, but between Russia and the West? Well, uh, our, our policy on uh, the future of, of NATO uh, enlargement hasn't changed since, uh, since this first came up um, in the briefing last week. Uh, the door is open, and countries that are willing uh, and able to contribute to the security of the Euro-Atlantic area are welcome to apply for membership, and any application will be considered on its merits. Um, so we support the open door policy. But NATO invites countries when they are ready, and, and any decision is one for NATO and Ukraine to make. Um, uh, this, is, uh, this is a process uh, that, takes, uh, that takes some time, um, but it's a decision that, that uh, Ukraine uh, and NATO should make free from any outside interference. Um, does the United States government, as a leading member of NATO, uh, have a position on whether Ukraine is now or will be in the very near future ready to uh, to join the alliance? Well, there are a variety of criteria, um, some some quite detailed. Uh, I, I don't uh, I don't think we've got a scorecard uh, right now to uh, to share, um, but uh, but clearly uh, you know the, it involves uh, a lot of uh, a, a lot of measures and uh, so. The United States, along with our NATO partners, will continue working with Ukraine, um, and it's you know Ukraine's sovereign decision what kind of a relationship it wants to pursue uh, with uh, with NATO. Does does the does the U.S. government, on its own, aside from NATO, have any kind of uh, criteria or requirement that a country uh, applying for membership uh, in NATO <clears throat> that um, that is in a that is in a situation? where part of it, you say part of it, is illegally occupied, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in this case, Crimea. Right. Uh, is that a hindrance to, in, in, the, in the eyes of, of the U.S. government, to uh, membership? Because it would, it would seem to me that if, if, if Ukraine did apply and get in, while you still say that Crimea has been illegally taken over by mm -hmm. Russia, that that would put them, or you, put, put NATO almost instantly in a, mm -hmm. a state of war, no? No, I, oh, I, I understand your question. Uh, I'm not aware of any, of any legal uh, restriction. Uh, happy to look and see if there's more uh, to be Well, not a NATO restriction. I'm just wondering if the no, U.S. government. No, legal, legal Right, right, but not a, a NATO one. I'm looking for what the U.S. government would mm -hmm. think about that as a member of NATO. Right, I understand. Okay. Leslie. Um, also sticking on Ukraine, you probably saw Poroshenko's uh, um, uh, statement today of talks on January the 15th with the leaders of Germany, Russia, and France. Um, is the U.S. going to be part of those discussions? I believe that he has invited um, specifically the president, but do you know if anybody else as far as the diplomatic side? I'm not familiar with, uh, with whether there has been um, such, uh, such an invitation, uh, so I'll have to confirm details and get back to you uh, on that. Okay, yes. Could I ask a quick question on the arms trade treaty uh, that, Go ahead. that actually went into effect on Christmas Eve on the 24th? The U.S. is a signatory to that, but it's not ratified. Could you tell us what is the, what will you do to sort of help ratify it on, by mm -hmm. the Senate? Uh, I'll have to check and, and see what more detail we can share. I, I just don't know where, the, um, where it stands. Uh, and of course, there are, we depend on the Senate to ratify. Uh, international agreements and treaties, um, but you know where where they stand in their uh, how, what they've got in their docket, and uh, and how quickly they may get to it is something I I don't have at my fingertips. Um, Ali, go ahead. 
Uh, just really quick on um, Scotland. Uh, since we've been in here, I think there's news that there was a confirmed case of Ebola in Scotland from a worker who went from Sierra Leone to Scotland. I'm just wondering if, if, the, if you were aware of that before you came out and um, uh, whether or not the U.S. might be providing any expertise or guidance to the, the Scots given our mm -hmm. experience in that realm. Well, I, I wasn't aware of that, uh, but certainly if, if the United Kingdom were, uh, were seeking uh, <coughs> to consult uh, based on the United States experience uh, with healthcare workers who have come back from Ebola-affected regions, of course, we would stand ready to do that, but I'm not aware of a, of an, of a pending uh, request. Okay, thanks, everyone. Thank you.